Hey everyone, it's Jenny at JC Cards, and today I'm showing you some of the new products in the Welcome Home release from Catherine Pooler Designs. Today's video features two cards with emboss resist techniques, watercoloring with inks, and also some easy partial die cutting, so be sure to stay tuned for both cards. If you're watching this before February 18th, 2019, this is part of a video hop, and the next hop is in the description box below. If you leave comments and subscribe to the channels in the hop, you could be in with a chance to win a prize, so be sure to take part. For my first card, I'm using what is probably my favourite product from the new release. It's called Rondi's Window. It's a red rubber background stamp that fits perfectly onto an A2 size card. And I just wanted to quickly show you this card that I created with pencil colouring and heat embossing. So you can get the full effect of what you can do with this background stamp. Unfortunately, I didn't film myself creating that card. I will be honest, it took me the best part of a day and a lot of hand cramping. So I've prepared my panel of Catherine Pooler premium white cardstock, which I've got trimmed to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm heat embossing in clear. You could also use white embossing powder, um, but of course this background is gonna look absolutely stunning heat embossed in whichever color you choose. So I'm tapping off the excess powder and then heating it up with my heat tool. And when this melts, it obviously turns clear, which creates a subtle background image. I'm then going to be doing some ink blending. I'm first off taking Sugared Lavender, which is a more greyish toned purple, and I'm going to be blending from the centre. So I'm using my um, trusty blusher brushes to do the blending, and I've chosen one that's got a slightly smaller head to it because it helps me be a little bit more light-handed, and also I'm not going out to the entire edge of the panel. So I wanted a slightly smaller blender here to make sure that I didn't go too far out. And I sped it up here, but, but basically I'm blending from the center with a light hand going out towards the edges of the pattern a few times going over it to build up some of the intensity. I'm then using Catherine Pooler Ink in Pixie Dust, and I'm using the same blender brush here and just taking it from the center again, blending out, and then toning it down and blending it towards the edges. And then as a final, color I'm using Royal Treatment. Now this is quite an intense dark purple so I'm using a much smaller brush here because I'm only intending to do this very very center of the embossed image and as you'll see when you go over it with the ink the embossing powder resists the ink and what you can do is just lightly buff it with a cloth and it will just take off any of the ink that's still sitting on the surface of the embossing powder. I'm now using the new Cottage Corsage stamp set, which is kind of like a, a modern art um, bouquet. It has coordinating dies that go with it. And I'm inking it up with Midnight Ink by Catherine Pooler. So this ink is Copic friendly. You can use alcohol markers with it. You can also use water with it as well for water coloring. So I've got a panel here of uh, Bristol Smooth cardstock, which does take water pretty well, and it's also great for using Zig Blender pens, which is how I'm going to colour my image today. So I'm just smushing down onto my craft mat the same three ink colours that I used to create the blended background panel. And I'm looking to create a more subtle, kind of greyish toned bunch of florals. So for my flowers, I'm using the, uh, this is the sugared lavender. I'll then go in at the edges with the pixie dust and a little bit of the uh, darker purple as well towards the center. And what I'm doing is I'm just using the blender brush to dip it into the ink I've smushed onto my ink pad, pick up a little bit, blend it out as you would with any other uh, alcohol marker or coloring pen and I'm just using it to blend it out. And this is a really good way for coloring. I saw Ashley, who's also on the design team, do this, and I just wanted to give it a go, because it's a great way of using your inks for a different purpose other than just ink blending. And it's also a great way to coordinate with an ink blended background. I do want to apologize a little bit for the lighting here. Uh, it sped up quite a lot and it was getting late in the evening, so unfortunately it does uh, flicker more than I would like. So my apologies, I'll try and fix that in future videos. For the leaves, because this is sped up, you probably didn't see that, but I'm using Stone Blue 
for the lighter blue colour on the leaves and then I'm going in and adding some shading with the juniper mist which is the darker blue and I've just smushed them onto my craft mat in the same way that I did for the purple colours and I, I'm a huge fan of this technique, I really really like it, I'm definitely going to be trying it again in the future. So I've die cut the bouquet with the coordinating die and then I'm backing my heat embossed panel with some purple craft foam that I've cut to the same size as, as the panel itself. I did trim it down to four by five and a quarter in the end. And I noticed that the co color coordination combination I'm using here is the same as my scissors, my trusty scissors from Amazon. Uh, totally coincidental, I didn't use them as inspiration, but I wanted to point that out for some reason. Um, so I'm adhering down the bouquet with some foam tape and where it peaks over the edge I'm just going to trim it off. Now I could have stuck this in the centre of my panel but that would have covered up all my effort with the uh, triple coloured ink blending. So I, I pl placed it so that it looks like the centre of the Rondi's window is being held towards those two leaves that are pointing in towards the centre. I've now got a panel of black midnight cardstock and I've prepped it with my powder tool and then I'm stamping one of the sentiments, I think it's the just because sentiment from the stamp set and there's some really good scripty, super pretty sentiments in this stamp set. I'm then sprinkling over some white opaque embossing powder and then tapping off any excess and heating it up with my heat tool. Off camera I trimmed it out with my trimmer and cut off one edge with, at an angle just for a bit of interest. I then spent ages fussing around with where to put it because I didn't want to cover up any of my background. Um, but you can see where I ended up in the end. And as a final touch I added some Nouveau Drops in Morning Dew which are clear. They're a little bit like glossy accents, they do create more of a dome. And I just added them into the centres of the flowers and then a few others around the sentiment for good measure. So for my second card I'm going to show you some partial die cutting and I'm using these partial die cutting plates. They are specifically made for the larger die cut machines but they're smaller to enable you to do the partial die cutting more easily. But you can use your standard size plates for this. I just found it a little bit more fiddly. And I'm using this new interlocked die from the new collection by Catherine Pooler. It's a super detailed die, I really love it, but you definitely need to have a metal shim or something like that for your die cutting machine to make sure that you cut all the pieces out. Off camera I've already prepared my card base, so it's cut to five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. I've made my first score line at two and an eighth inch, flipped it round and scored at two and an eighth inch again and it creates a gatefold card. I've then placed one of my partial die cut plates down on my machine and I'm placing the edges of both of the plates with that first score line. So I've lined it up with the plate, put my die over the top um, in the position I want it in and the next plate on top again and you'll see that wherever the two plates meet together it'll die cut out that interlock die and wherever else those plates aren't there isn't enough pressure to die cut out the image so you end up with when you do it on both sides this gatefold card where the interlock die has made two pretty windows folded in. You'll also notice that off camera I used my pokey tool to pop out some of the pieces and I actually left some of the pieces in as well. Just along the score line if there are any pieces that stick out you can just trim those off carefully with your scissors. I'm keeping the rest of the card pretty simple. So I've added a panel of Catherine Pooler Designs pattern paper to the back of the card. You can also obviously add white cardstock over the top of that if you want somewhere else to write. I'm then taking a strip of vellum. This is about an inch high. And I'm using the new awesome and wonderful stamp set from the new release to create a cool phrase using two of the stamps and I'm stamping it with embossing ink and then I'm going to emboss it with this Royal Crush embossing glitter from WOW. So it says hope your day is awesome. It's a really good stamp set. Again I just love how Catherine Pooler has these sentiment stamp sets that you can make your own words and phrases. I've done it a lot for my cards on this release 
and just check out that embossing glitter. I just love it. Blue and purple mixed together is really, really pretty and it goes so perfectly with the patterned paper, which is by Catherine Pooler. So I'm using this vellum strip to be the kind of loop that goes around the card and keeps it closed. You could of course use those hoops that we've popped the pieces out from on the die cut and use ribbon, or I choose to use vellum, uh, so I could add my sentiment onto it. I'm folding it over to the back of the card, and I you do need to be careful to leave a little bit of space either side, don't make it too tight, or the recipient won't be able to slip it off the card. And then you can just attach it at the back with some dry adhesive. And that completes my second card. I hope I've given you some inspiration on how you can use these new products in the Catherine Pooler Welcome Home release. Don't forget to follow along in the video hop. The next stop on the hop is in the description below, as well as a link to the supplies I've used. That's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And here are a couple of other videos you may enjoy. Don't forget to click that bell to be reminded when I have new videos. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.